When it comes to building muscle mass, there is a constant battle between heavyweights and lightweights and how you should implement this into your training to get the best results possible. Some of the most common things that you will hear are that heavyweights with low reps are better for building mass and that lightweights with heavier reps are better for getting toned or getting shredded. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are also a lot of people who tend to go heavier with low reps to build more muscle mass. And then, yeah, I, I don't even know anymore. Uh, there's a lot of discussion going around and there are a lot of myths that uh, make the whole process of building muscle way more complicated than it needs to be. So in order to paint a clear picture on what is actually important when it comes to building muscle mass and how you should implement either heavyweights or lightweights or maybe even both in your training program, I'll be diving into some of the scientific principles that you need to know in order to build muscle mass effectively. off with a scientific study done by Philips et al in 2012 in which they took 18 people and split them up into two groups where they put people on the leg extension machine three times per week for 10 weeks straight. Group 1 used 30% of their one rep max for 30 to 40 reps so that was the lightweight and high rep group and then they let the second group perform 80% of their one rep max for 10 to 12 reps so that was the heavier weight and lower rep group. And the conclusion that came out of that study was that the results in terms of hypertrophy were pretty much similar. But the caveat of this study was that it was performed on untrained individuals. And as you guys may or may not know, untrained individuals respond to pretty much any stimulus when it comes to working out, AKA they will grow from either high reps or low reps since the muscles still need to adapt. So after that, there was another study done, again by Philips Tell, in which they used the same study setup, but this time, they chose individuals who had four years of resistance training experience. And the results of this study, again, concluded that the percentage of one rep max still did not dictate better or worse results when it came to hypertrophy. And after those two studies, there have been numerous amounts of follow-up studies, all coming down to the same conclusion. So whether you're using lightweights or heavyweights, they all result in the same amount of hypertrophy if volume, which is load times sets times reps times time on the tension is equated for and that the intensity is equal, AKA how close you're training to failure. So I guess it's now time to ditch the heavy metal plates and start using the pink dumbbells, right? Not exactly. Let's look at practicality here. Imagine yourself having to take a set of squats to failure with a light weight, meaning you would have to do say 30 to 40 plus reps. And then imagine yourself taking a set of squats to failure with a heavy weight, meaning you would have to do say eight to 12 reps. I think you can already guess which of those options sounds more appealing. So now that you know that it doesn't necessarily matter if you're using heavy weights or light weights when it comes to hypertrophy and building muscle mass, what should you do and how should you program this in your training to get the best results possible? Because there are still a lot of people who either purely train with heavy weights, or there are also a lot of people who train purely with light weights. And there are also people who like to mix both in the same training. So in order to make this as practical and efficient as possible, let's look at the mechanisms of muscle growth. There are three mechanisms, which are mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. Mechanical tension means that you'll be utilizing heavy weights and low reps. Muscle damage simply implies going through the eccentrics with control. Since muscle damage is primarily caused by the eccentric motion of the movement, AKA the part where you're stretching out the muscle under load, and metabolic stress is caused by going higher in reps with lighter weights, AKA pump training. And all of those three mechanisms all result in the same outcome if they are applied appropriately. Now to put this very simple, going to failure is way easier done with heavy weights. So in order to apply mechanical tension to your training, it would be best to opt for heavier weights on your compound movements in the beginning of your training so that you're focusing on getting stronger on these movements, also known as promoting progressive overload to your training, which means that you'll be giving your muscles a bigger stimulus over time, which results in muscle growth, which then allows you to take your sets closer to failure a lot easier than simply only going for lighter weights with higher reps. So the whole principle of having a strength rep range, a hypertrophy rep range, 
and an endurance rep range doesn't necessarily make sense, right? At the end of the day, it comes down to the intensity and the volume that should be equated for regardless of the weight or the amount of reps that you're doing in your workouts. I can imagine that taking every set to 30 to 40 plus reps with a light weight just doesn't sound very fun and it, it pretty much sounds like torture. <laughs> and in addition to utilizing those heavier weights on your compound movements, you can then add accessory movements or isolation type movements on which you would utilize a lighter weight for higher reps. Another thing that you also have to consider is that going heavy on isolation type exercises, so for example, a side lateral raise or a bicep curl, is purely not safe. Right? You will have a lot of risk of running into injuries, tearing a tendon or whatever you can imagine. So it would then also be safer to opt for lighter weights for higher reps on these isolation type exercises. Now, of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go for 30 to 40 plus reps on all of your higher rep exercises, but just be sure that you're utilizing a weight that you can manage properly in, for example, the 10 to 15 plus rep range. Now the pump, or also known as cell swelling, has also shown to have a positive effect on muscle growth. And while the pump is often best achieved with lighter weights for higher reps, it would be a solid option to include in your training along with those exercises that you go heavier on for lower reps. So to give you some more insight on how you should program this in your training program, let's look at an example push day. So for a heavy compound on a push day, you could go for the bench press, which you could perform three sets of five to eight heavy reps, which then automatically takes care of the mechanical tension mechanism of the workout, an incline dumbbell press for three sets of eight to 12 reps, they would move on to a chest fly for three sets of 12 to 15 reps. So that already goes a little bit higher in reps and obviously lower in weight since you want to utilize the muscular functions properly, AKA not performing bear hugs with a chest fly, which makes no sense at all. And then another isolation type exercise would be a side race, which you would perform three sets of 15 to 20 plus reps. Again, since if you go any heavier than that in the, uh, let's say eight to 10 rep range, uh, your form will be diminished very easily. Moving on to an overhead extension for three sets of 12 to 15 reps and a tricep push down for three sets of 15 to 20 plus reps. Right, what you have to keep in mind is that if you go a lot heavier on these isolation type exercises, uh, your form will suffer purely because you're not fully able to utilize the muscular function properly throughout the entire set and rep range. All right, a compound is a compound for a reason. It utilizes multiple muscle groups at a time to make the movement possible. And for an isolation type exercise, that is not something that you want. All right, when you're doing a tricep pushdown, you don't want your front delt and your chest to come into the movement. And the same goes for a side raise. You don't want to half curl the weight upright here and then perform the side raise. Include both compound movements and isolation type movements with both heavy weights and low reps and light weights and high reps to get the most bang for your buck. So in conclusion, to summarize this whole entire video into a few important principles, you need to take the following in mind. As long as volume and intensity are equated, heavy or light weights produce the same level of hypertrophy. But in order to get the most efficiency and practicality out of your workouts, apply both heavy weights with low reps and light weights with heavy reps to get the best possible hypertrophy to ensure you get the best gains possible. All right, and that's all for this video, guys. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to smash the like button because it truly helps out the channel grow. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel and turn post notifications on for so much more content coming really soon. I'm out, guys, and peace out. See you in the next one.